Welcome back to Pagan Coffee Talk. I am Oswin. I have Lord Knight with me, and we are continuing our conversation on ethics and morals. Yes, that's right. The subject that never ends. <laughs> Pretty much, but we're going to try to keep it down. <laughs> well, let's see. Last week, we talked about ethics and morals itself, what the definitions or our concept of it was. Right. And we also talked about, you know, keeping your word and how it's really important. You know, because you also got to remember there's an aspect of this keeping your word that shows up in rituals, especially initiations. Where you promise to keep some certain things a secret and you're giving up an awful lot. Right. If you tell your chances of reincarnation, all your powers and your tools and everything turns against you. We'll go further into that in another podcast. <laughs> but I mean, so what we need to talk about now is accepting responsibilities for one's actions. Right. We briefly touched on that last episode. I'm, I'm like you, let's delve a little bit more into this. There's a little bit more to that. Right. First of all, this all comes from the concept of that people in more traditional crafts, and especially in our tradition, we actually believe that we are the cause of our own problems. Oh, that's right. going to sit well with some folks. Nope. Again, everything wrong in your life is your fault. Nobody else. This is not your parents. It's not the guy down the road. It's not, you know, what's his name over your boss, boss's boss. And uh, it's none of their fault. It's yours. What you mean? I, I, I can't blame my parents for things nope. that are wrong in my life. Nope. All you can blame uh, the where the problem lies in all this is your reaction as an adult. There is a certain point. Yes. Bad things can happen to kids and certain people and have things forced upon them. And this is not their fault. All right. So a girl getting raped, that's not her fault. Now, her reaction and the way she has her relationships with everybody else around her, that is her fault. Am I making sense there? Well, yeah. Um, my only thing is, is you can't. In some ways, you can't say it is her fault because she has been traumatized by this event. All right. Which is going to affect everything, every relationship that she's ever going to have. Are you ready for the witch logic here? <laughs> <laughs> Here's how the witch logic goes. Is if you're doing your meditations, which if you want to see how we talk about meditations, there's a podcast on it. If you're doing your meditations, this means you can go through these issues and realize what parts your issues and what parts somebody else's issues. Does that make sense? If I'm a woman and I've been raped and every time I see a man, I just freak out for no reason. That's not the man's fault. That's me. That's that woman dealing with what in the world's going on. But she's got to deal with it either through therapy or a combination of therapy and meditation and has to understand where her behavior starts to stray from what's actually reasonable. The fact is just because one guy raped you does not mean all guys are going to rape you. But right. yet you see this. Well, hey, this person called me a homophobic name, so therefore everybody's going to do it. That it don't work that way. No, it doesn't. And uh, again, know. why? Yes, it was forced on somebody else. The person doing the raping, that is their problem, not yours. It wasn't your fault to begin with. It is their fault. They have the problem, not you. Right. And before a lot of people say anything or get incredibly upset, I can, I completely agree with this logic. As someone who had a traumatic sexual experience it took me a long time and it wasn't until i got involved in witchcraft and started meditating on a regular basis that i was able to deal with that mm -hmm. yes it affected my relationships it affected my life meditation and my craft 
helped me through all of that. So I can speak from experience that, yes, it is your reaction that is your responsibility. Because the way I'm looking at it is the majority of times most people have a problem in this situation is feeling guilt where there is no guilt. For me, it wasn't necessarily the guilt. It was it was the trauma of the experience because I had never expected to be in a situation like that. Yes, but could not some of that guilt of, well, why wasn't I strong enough to fight this person off? Mm, no. You know, why not wasn't me. I a strong enough person to realize what was going to happen to begin with? Well, I could I could see how that plays into a lot of people. Do, do, do you me, see what I know? To me, they're, they're, the majority of times when we're upset about something like that or get, you know, triggered by certain things like this, is us feeling guilty about something. Yes, the majority of times, times, yes. The majority of times, not all the time, but the majority of times is, is feeling guilty like you didn't do something. You know, I could see where in the world somebody as an adult who might have gotten molested as a kid would be sitting back going, I felt guilty because... As an adult, I knew that at no time did they ever go, yeah, but I was a kid then. I didn't know any better. Right. I got to give myself a break there. And I think meditation helps you there to go, yeah, you were a kid. You can't stop a full-grown adult from doing this to you. Right. And something like that, you probably also need to seek professional help. Professional help. I, again, all this is with professional help, taking your meditation, medications, and your meditations. Seriously. You know, again, I, you know, like I said in the meditation, meditation might not fix all your problems, but it might lessen the symptoms on certain more extremes. Right. Behaviors like psychosis and bipolar and depression and all this. You know, if nothing else, to give you a chance to see when you know the signs, when you're about to do something you're not supposed to because your levels are out of whack to give you enough there to call up your therapist and go, hey, guess what? Hey, <laughs> you might want to send somebody over here. <laughs> right. I'm, I'm on that edge. <laughs> Again, it's it's taking responsibility Ability. for that. Right. Once you take responsibility for that and, you know, you say, okay, no, I may not have been able to stop this or I may not have been able to do anything about this, but I can do something about it now. Right. I can control how it affects me. Right. In your relationships. So therefore you have to take responsibility for that. Yes. And again, the Nobody majority else can. The majority of the times the problems that we have in our lives are caused by us. Seriously. I mean, even the most simplest thing, you don't get a job promotion, you get mad. Well, you got mad because you didn't get a job promotion. At any time, did you ever sit down and look at your boss and go, okay, I need to know what I need to do to make sure that next time I get it? Right. I mean, because again, the person that got the job, you don't necessarily know everything about them. They could have, you know, they could be sitting on three PhDs going, hey, yeah, I had these ever since I was six. So I'm sorry, stuff like that happens. Yeah, as, as far as like the job promotion goes, you have to sit back and you have to look at it from your perspective and from your boss's perspective and say, okay, what what could I have done right in my job to get that promotion? And I'm going to tell you what didn't I do? You know, I mean, this is an actual conversation I've actually had with a boss. And to see the look on your boss's face when you sit there going, oh, look, no, no, no. I don't have a problem with this person getting this promotion. What I'm here to talk about is me. And what I need to do to show that next time it comes up, there is no debate. There is no question. Right. Everybody just automatically goes, yep, him. <laughs> <laughs> In that meeting or making that decision. Bosses tend to have a better outcome with that. They, they, they look at you a little bit different when they're going, well, he's looking to improve himself. You know, uh, there's like this one, and because there's like this one scene in a the movie. There's this one scene in a movie where this woman is actually driving her boss somewhere long distance, right? And she's sitting there and she's complaining the whole entire time about because she's a woman, she never gets a chance. And her boss literally turns around and looks at her going, but this is your elevator ride. 
you have me trapped in right. a vehicle for a set amount of time. You should have already ran off 12 different pitches to distinguish yourself from everybody else. And when he calls her out on this, she looks at him and goes, well, I don't know what. I, well, that's the first thing you need to do is figure out what you want to say. Right. And I, some people get, you know, all upset about this. And I'm like, well, you know, some women or some people don't feel like they can do this. I'm sorry. That's not your boss's fault. That's not society's fault. Right. That's your fault. Why do you feel inadequate doing that? Yeah. What makes you think that you can't do, do that? It. Have you delved into that? Yeah. I mean, get this, to the root of the problem. Th this is not a, you know, ethics or moral problem here. It's the way you feel. And I'm sorry, if you're meditating, you're nervous. You might be nervous because, well, hey, what if your boss starts finding 15 million holes in your argument? Right. Well, what do you do? Well, if that's really your problem, you go back and you try to find those holes and have arguments with them to begin with. You're still accepting responsibility for your actions. You're accepting the responsibility for your fear, and that's the fear that you might not know enough. That, to me, is accepting responsibility for your actions. You know what's going to happen, so therefore you do everything to limit that. Right. You know, your boss, yeah, there's always a chance your boss could look at you like you're completely nuts and walk off. That's his problem, not yours. Right. And it still doesn't mean that your idea is great. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, but you, you, you have to, because at some point it can't always be somebody else's fault. No. At some point you're going to have to go, okay, well, you know, I made bad choices. Here are the choices I made. Is it going to happen that somewhere down the line, it's somebody else's fault, sure, mm. but not completely. Well, it might not you be. You still had a hand in that, whether you realized it or not. You still had a hand in that, so take responsibility for that. Yeah, but how many of these people are reacting to what you did? Right. And it just looks like their fault. If I was to catch you out kissing somebody, right? You know, I'd be like, "Hey, what the hell up with this?" <laughs> <laughs> you know I mean that's like you know somebody cheating and why should I feel guilty because you cheated My, what made you feel like you could right at what point in our relationship do you think that's okay right you know but I mean be honest about it kettle pot black you know <laughs> that's more psychology and stuff like that but again Somebody that comes up going, yeah, I, I found them attractive. I kissed them. Right. You know, and that was it. I'm sorry if you're keeping your word and all that, and this is what you said and all your actions and your accepted responsibility and everything, why shouldn't I believe you? Right. Now, if it turns out you lie, then, uh, you know, all hell goes. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's a different story altogether. <laughs> you know. That's where you turn the page and, oh, oh look. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> you know. Hell just rose. <laughs> right. I mean, because then, you know, you're, you're breaking O's and your word and all this other stuff, which begins this cascade effect. Right. You know, but again, it's still only caused by you. Right. Not by anybody else. So, again, take responsibility for it. Do something about it. <laughs> All right, so like the next concept here is we have we believe in balance. This isn't necessarily an ethics or a moral, but it's the way we look at things to decide which side's right and which side's wrong. The general census here is is that the majority of the times both sides are right and wrong at the same time. Right. All right, because again, there's their side of the story and then there's the other side of the story. If you only hear one side of the story, but don't go and hear what the other one is, that's your stupidity. You have to accept the responsibilities of your actions based on that assumption. Only listen to one side. Right. I mean, it's kind of like if, if someone comes to you and they want you to make a decision about something, and it's a 
it's a problem between this person and another person, but you only hear one side of the story. You make a decision based on that. You're probably making the wrong decision. Well, I mean, because you've not heard both sides of the story. No, you haven't. And again, you might look at both sides of the story and I mean, listen to both sides of the story and the actual real answer on the solving the problem is to remove both people. Right. Because both people are at fault. It takes two to fight. It takes two to argue. These things affect what we actually do or how we react to stuff. And I believe I believe you actually had an incident like that at one point and that was the solution. Uh, it yeah. was just to remove both people because even leaving one leaves the potential for that to happen again. Yeah. Because you can't always tell who's right and who's wrong in that situation. No, but we have people out here in society that thinks it either has to be one or the other. <laughs> no, I <it> don't. <laughs> or, or that, you know, just because you don't want to get the vaccine or don't believe in vaccine mandates, therefore you're against vaccines altogether. I mean, I don't know how to explain that, that if you're not for us, you're against us attitude. Right. Well, I mean, I hate to be this way. In reality, that's not always true. Just because you don't agree with somebody doesn't necessarily mean you're against them or you're on the opposite end. Right. You just don't agree. You just don't agree. It could be it could be something as simple as a little detail that you don't agree with. But point is, you don't completely agree with that person. It's not that you're against them. Well, it don't make one right or wrong no. in this situation. It just it is a difference of opinion. Exactly. You know, I mean, like my opinion on abortion. My opinion on abortion is is that since we accept when, since we accept responsibility for our actions, that means none of our priestesses should be getting unwanted pregnancy because of stupidity. It's going to be, hey, I, I got pregnant because the condom broke or the, this didn't work, you know. But, the, you know, these people are also going to be the ones where it's, hey, I'm taking the pill, but you're going to wear that rubber too. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> so, you know, that way if it does break, we ain't going to worry about it. Again, this is accepting responsibilities of your actions and looking at things balanced. Okay, because again, not everybody's right, not everybody's wrong. And you have to look at both sides of the argument here. And the majority of the times, the actual good point on this is the middle. I mean, don't get me wrong. There's some traditional mysteries and stuff around this concept that makes this even more important to us. But it's still there, that in between. It's not, I, I can't see anybody in our tradition sitting there going, hey, yeah, we want 100% communism, and another sitting there going, we want 100% capitalism. Right. The majority of the, majority of the uh, more traditional witches I know, they fall in the middle. They're like, yeah, we want some social things here, but we want our freedoms too. Right. We don't want you to tell us what to have for breakfast every morning or how much we should have to weigh or not to weigh. I mean, again, individuality. And craft is a really important thing. Right. We might agree on certain concepts and stuff like that and be able to work together just fine, but anybody dictating anything there is removed because, well, I don't know about any other tradition, but in ours, we, we try our best to remove dogma. Right. Because it's more important for us with the concept of we have more uplift or more respect for someone who lives in sin and does not partake. Right. Or the person who has power but tries to not use it to get things done. Right. We tend to like that restraint in people. You know, it'd be like a rich guy. Hey, yeah, I could do all this, but you know what? Instead, I'm about driving a Yugo and <laughs> a little Festiva <laughs> or whatever. Right. Living in a two bedroom house and not a mansion. Exactly. The evolution or the progression of this also means that, yes, you're going to be judged upon your reactions to stuff. People are going to be, people are going to sit back. They're going to go, okay, are they keeping their word? 
Well, they said they were going to show up this time, and yeah, they were two minutes late, but two minutes late is waiting for the guy to, you know, the person in front of you to turn. (laughs) (laughs) I don't think anybody's going to get bent out of shape. But when you, you know, if you sit there and fear told ritual starts at, you know, seven o'clock and you don't show up until 730. Right. No, you shouldn't be let in. Nobody should. We shouldn't have to stop just because you couldn't show up on time. No, absolutely not. You know, does that mean you don't get to partake? No, you might have to sit out there and, and just partake in whatever happens afterwards. You just know better. Okay, well, you know, hey, on nights I got ritual, I might need to leave a little bit earlier. <laughs> right. Anything else you'd like to know? What about speaky little and listen much? You know, I am only responsible for what I say and not what you hear. <laughs> And people of craft tend to be very picky about which words they use. Right. To make sure there's no misunderstandings here. If you don't know a word or something, ask. This, just like anything else, the only dumb question there is is the one that was never asked. Right. You know, because that's always the one that's going to trip you up later. Ask questions. Talk to people. Communicate. Be honest in your communications. If you go to a priest or a priestess and you want their spiritual advice, yes, be honest with them to start off with. It's not going to play out well if you're not. If you've done something wrong, sit down, talk to somebody, anybody. Keep your word. Take responsibility for your actions. Realize that all the problems in your world are your fault, nobody else's. There does come a time to put on adult, your adult pull-ups and accept responsibility. Right. You know, yes, bad things happen to good people and good things happen to bad people. That's life. All right, I've seen a lot of them people who finally get a job and then a week later, the car breaks down and all the, and they have all these other problems. Right. It happens. But I've also seen these same people walk into work and sit down and be honest with their boss and work something out. You know, and some of them even sit there and go, hey, I'm taking a bus or you might have to take an earlier bus to get to work. Right. It happens. You know, I don't think anybody's going to hold anything like that against people. If they're open and honest about it. Now, if you're sitting there going, well, you know, your car breaks down every other week, get a new car. Right. I mean, this is a concept where a lot of people hear me a lot of times is what Lord men used to tell me all the time is if your ox falls in a ditch on Sunday, get your ox out. If your ox falls into a ditch every Sunday, either fill in the ditch or kill the ox. Right. The statement of this is fix the problem. Whatever's preventing you from doing what you need to do, fix it. If you can't meditate because when you get home, everybody's running around, then you might have to stay up an hour later. Or get up an hour earlier. Earlier. Something. Something. Do something. You're not going to fix it by doing nothing. Right. You know, if you can't show up for ritual all the time, That's fine. Nobody's going to complain. But again, if your car breaks down every ritual night, people are going to start raising an eyebrow going, what's the problem? Either get a new car or get this one fixed. Right. Where it don't become a problem anymore. But that's not what anybody wants to do. Everybody just wants to complain about this. Right. About the problem and not do anything about it. They want people to feel sorry for them and let them get away with this and that. Yes. Right. You, know, you, you promise to do something, you do it. All right. If you're doing, and if you've made a promise to do something, I hate to be this way, sit down and talk to the person you made the promise with. If it's too much or you can't do it, like it needs, like it, like they think it needs to be done or whatever, say something. Right. Don't just sit there and, half ass do it. That's not keeping your word. Exactly. Anything else? Anything I missed? Um, well, we haven't discussed 
concepts of good and evil. Well, there is no such thing as good and evil. Evil comes from the heart and minds of men. And even then, what's evil? Yeah, yeah, people would consider me evil to go out and kill somebody. Right. All right, so let's change this up. I go out and kill, I go out and shoot a person, right? Mm -hmm. Because they're molesting my kid. Okay. Is that still evil? I don't think so. There are a lot of things where you and me or some people might think this is wrong. And when you actually dig into it, it could be more minute. Right. I mean, because again, this is back to this whole entire concept of to make the swords, you have to destroy the plow. To make the plow, you have to destroy the, the sword. Right. And the, the concept here is, is there's always sometimes a bad outcome, no matter what the world you do. You have to, do, to create something new, you might have to destroy something old. Or to keep something old, you might have to destroy something new. Keeping a balanced approach to it, you can sort of say, well, this we can get rid of, but this we keep. Thank you for listening to Pagan Coffee Talk. I hope you join us next week. We travel down this trodden path, the maze of stone and mire. Just hold my hand as we pass by a sea of blazing pyres. And so it is the end of our days, so walk with me till morning breaks. And so it is the end of our days, so walk with me till morning breaks.